Windows on Steam Deck. Now, yeah. I was actually expecting to get Windows support for the Steam Deck before we did our initial hardware review, right? So that was way back, like over a month ago, I was expecting Windows drivers. And Valve kept saying, oh, we, we have them, but we can't send them something, something, legal review, something, something, oh. something. Okay. Sorry, we, we can't give them to you. But, but apparently there were working drivers, which makes sense because while there was obviously a lot of work to be done by AMD and Valve software teams, particularly I would think AMD for something like a closed source Windows driver, I mean, these were these were mostly known quantities, right? They're, they're Zen 3 cores, and they're bolted to an RDNA 2 onboard graphics chip rather than um, a Vega-based graphics chip. But fundamentally, that architecture exists already. So they're not starting from scratch, right? Like, they're, they're, there's a starting point that they have to work from. Um, so so I, was, I was expecting it to be pretty mature and pretty fleshed out and i was expecting it to come before our hardware review where we looked at uh we looked at thermals uh we looked at uh performance we looked at acoustics and and pretty much ran all the way through the deck and uh, you know ma major kudos to valve they did a great job of transparency and allowing us to really fully test it even though we were limited in terms of game selection just because the software really wasn't ready yet. And they, they knew that, and that was fine. But they told us that the Windows drivers were going to come. Like, I didn't, I didn't just pull that out of thin air. Oh, yeah. well, I am expecting Windows drivers because I am a Windows user. It wasn't like that. They told us they were going to come. Give me what I want. Then, in between the hardware review, so, so we had the lead up to the hardware review. So then we published the hardware review. And then in between the publishing of the hardware review, and the release of our software review, I was expecting Windows drivers again. And when I when I shot the software review, I, it was actually the morning of my family's ski trip to, um, right. I don't know what yeah. it's called anymore, but it used to be called Hemlock Mountain. And we were going there. And basically, I had to shoot it then because I kept putting off and putting off and putting off starting the software review because Valve kept sending just... They kept inundating me with software updates, and I was still expecting a Windows driver. So I went and I did, like, I played on it, I used it, I, I did spend a lot of time with it, and I, I wrote down a lot of thoughts. I threw a lot of things at the page, but I couldn't write the video because I couldn't tell the whole story because I hadn't, like, if they were gonna drop a Windows driver on me two days before publication, I was gonna have to have, like, a big section comparing Linux to Windows performance, for example. Like if I'm if I'm supposed to say this is the software review, I, it changes the angle of the video, right? Yeah. What I'm going to cover in it. So I ended up staying up until 7:30 in the morning, and then I only slept for about two hours. And then I went. I met a camera crew at like the new house because that's where they were set up doing some sponsored thing for Talus already. Anyway shot the A-roll, and then drove to the mountain <laughs> afterward because I, I had to leave it to the very last second. So again, there was a period of time when I was expecting Windows drivers. Well, they finally arrived yeah, this week. Like yesterday, And right? naturally, we dropped absolutely everything and immediately set to work testing them. And I got to tell you, you guys are going to want to watch the full video because the exact numbers matter. And I, I, I don't remember everything off the top of my head. But Anthony and I had a really good meeting about sort of what we want the scope of this video to be, because uh, I don't think that, <laughs> OK, in the state they're in, I don't want to invest too much time investigating oh. the performance differences between the in uh, between the Nvidia the Nvidia between the Linux and the Windows drivers. Oh my. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we had a really good chat about what we want the scope of the video to be, and man, did we ever find a ton of interesting stuff going on almost immediately. Um, and then also we had a really, we, we sat down, we did a full script review. We were, I almost never get to like sit down and talk to Anthony about stuff anymore because he hosts so many of the videos that he writes now. 
instead of me editing and me hosting them. So it was actually really nice to sit because we often will just chat about stuff. And, and I feel like we end up with, regardless of whether it's me who reviews it, I think we end up with a better script, a better video, if a second pair of eyes looks at it and starts to, you know, ask those questions, yeah. right? That yeah. someone, sometimes you're just, you got your nose buried when you're in it. you on it for too long, there's certain questions that you've had answered for so long that you yeah. don't really think about it anymore. Or you take something for granted. One of our new writers came in uh, talking to me about a video that we were doing about whether it matters if your GPU is still getting drivers. So we took drivers that have been unsupported for, in some cases, years yeah. and tried to run very new games on them to see, well, just how far does DirectX get you? You know, can you, can you just limp along and probably have compatibility or do you need a game ready driver, right? And really interesting findings, but we went into this whole explanation without having any kind of paragraph outlining like a prepper what is direct x yeah or something like that i can't remember yeah. if it was exactly that but we were we were missing some key piece of information I'm like hey you actually can't take that for granted this could be something that you know uh some young kid just getting into pc gaming watches and we need to give them at least okay it might be a little jargony but we need to give them at least a basic explanation of what purpose this serves before we can we can move past it <clears throat> So anyway, I sat down with Anthony and, and we talked through it and boy, is it ever a mixed bag. So first up, good guy Valve providing Windows drivers. Sure, yeah, yeah. They could have just as easily not done it. In fact, it would have been a lot less work for them and AMD because you got to remember, even though these are Zen 3 CPU cores and RDNA 2 based GPU cores, they are bolted together, glued together in a custom SOC. This is a custom chip. So there is absolutely extra work that needed to be done. Compounding matters is that aside from being a custom chip, it has, at least in the PC space, from my experience, a pretty unique um, system architecture. It doesn't have main system memory and GPU memory, right. which yeah. is normal for an integrated GPU, but with an integrated GPU at this kind of performance level, were there unique challenges? Presumably these are challenges AMD is probably going to have to face as they move into uh, their upcoming uh, RDNA 2 based IG, uh, like APUs. Yes, but definitely they could have saved themselves some work and they could have kicked some work down the road, but absolutely. Also, as soon as Valve provides a driver, they will start receiving support tickets. And even if, even if every message they get about running Windows on the Steam Deck, they just send back a canned response that says, we don't support Windows on the Steam Deck, which is their formal stance. Right. They have provided these drivers, but it is not a supported use case. It is still creating extra busy work for Valve Corporation. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And from our experience with it, <clears throat> it could create more support tickets than less. So there's a few things yeah, to keep in mind. One is that not all drivers are available. First and foremost, the Wi-Fi drivers are not baked into Windows. Actually, no. First and foremost, you will not be running the latest version of Windows. Support for the FTPM, so the, the trusted platform module that is required for Windows 11 is not baked into the firmware yet. I do not want Windows 11 anyways. So you cannot, well, remember this is a touchscreen device. Windows 11 has a lot of improvements for touchscreen devices. That's fair. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you, you might want Windows 11, whether you are correct or not. Um, that's a whole separate conversation that we're not going to get into today. But so first and foremost, you can't install the latest version of Windows. So you are stuck with Windows 10, for better or for worse. Second of all, when you install Windows, you're going to have to go get some kind of network network adapter or something. Because I don't know if you've had this experience, but Windows installers recently have stopped allowing you to go to proceed past the setup phase unless you have an internet connection and unless you sign into a Microsoft account. There are workarounds, to be clear. Yeah. But for most people, like for the 
is a console. That's the way we have to think about it. To be fair, it. I don't think, if you're looking at it from the perspective of a console gamer, I don't think they're going to install Windows. That's too much of an advanced move. Um, unless there's a game they like really want to play and they find a super basic tutorial to get them through it, they might. If it's a super basic tutorial, it would probably include this portion, though. It might include it, but you might have to go out and buy one. Yeah. Unless you already have a Type-C to Ethernet adapter for your Switch, for example, or something like that. So you may have to go out and get some other network adapter because the onboard Wi-Fi module is does not have support baked into Windows. Yeah. So you'll need a network connection in order to get a network connection. I'm so surprised so paradox. this networking device did not have support baked into Windows. I know, right? <laughs> okay. Once you're in Windows, you can install Wi-Fi drivers. Bluetooth works, which is great. Valve does not have an audio driver yet for the onboard speakers or for the three and a half mil jack. They are working Ooh, on that. Okay. That's coming. And then there were also some other devices in Device Manager that just were still yellow exclamation marks. We don't know exactly what they were. What they were, yeah. Yeah. Um, Did you try all the different input types and everything? Okay. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. We, we tried Bluetooth and USB-C and they were both Sorry. fine. Uh, thumbsticks, okay. pads on the back. So, <laughs> Windows navigation on the Steam Deck. Oh, boy. Not great. Okay. Yeah. Because the default behavior for the Steam Deck is A is enter, B is escape, and the ability for applications. Okay. So first of all, Valve did uh, Valve does allow a Steam controller to be used as like a, a joystick to mouse device. Okay. So yeah. you can actually use it to move the mouse around. And remember trackpads. Yeah. So you can actually move the mouse around with the trackpad. The trackpads uh, work. Okay. Except when it stops. Okay. <laughs> right? Yikes. All right. And if you close Steam, then... <laughs> the, the, is it the trackpad? No, the trackpad still works, but the joystick input stops working for the mouse. Oh, no. Or something like that. <laughs> but if you have Steam open in the background, so that yeah, you yeah. can use the joystick or whatever, and you go to open software like RetroArch, which has controller support, RetroArch will not grab the controller properly it's being used so what happens is oh. even trying to do something as simple as navigating the menu in retro arch <laughs> you try to go back you try to just like go back a couple menus escape escape retro arch is closed oh no <laughs> nice. so it's pretty freaking rough it's pretty rough right now and i haven't even gotten to game performance my expectation was that Compatibility, we didn't test a really broad set of games because quite frankly, I, I don't feel there was a ton to be learned from that. Like, yeah, game compatibility is going to be more Windows-y. So yeah. if there's anti-cheat <clears throat> software that doesn't run in Linux or that the developer you know, intentionally prevents from running on Linux, because realistically, that's what most of it is these days, as far as we can tell. If, if there's... It's either prevents or it's they haven't taken the action to allow yes. it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, whether it's anti-cheat or whether it's just games that Proton or what's it called? Steam Play now? I, I think so. I forget. Yeah, Ste yeah. Steam Play hasn't caught up to. Um, game compatibility is going to be better. But performance, well, I was expecting it to be, I was expecting it to trade blows. Because we've looked at this before. We've run into situations where Linux underperforms Windows because trans translation can have a cost. We've run into situations where uh, the translation has a cost, but Linux is also just like lighter, and you end up with them canceling each other out. You get performance parity. And we've even seen situations where the drivers on Linux are better than the proprietary drivers that exist on Windows. And Linux actually manages to squeeze more out of the hardware than Windows. But there tends to be like that back and forth. On the Steam Deck, it was just annihilation in all the titles we tested. Like Linux just ran away from Windows. And some of this we expected, like Elden Ring, for example. Valve has put work specifically into fixing, uh, I think it's some kind of, um, uh, oh man, like texture optimization thing that they've done. Uh, what is it? Compiling this, shaders. And this was like a big issue on Windows to the point where people were saying it was Huge. like almost unplayable. At the Huge issue on Windows. Yeah. 
Um, and so, so what Valve has actually done, it's, it's kind of insane, is they've taken a feature that um, the Elden Ring developers should have implemented in mm -hmm. DirectX, yep. and they've hacked it in as part of the DirectX to Vulkan translation. Very funny and a big, moving out the game. a big move because Elden Ring's freaking huge right oh, now. Shader, yeah, Shader Cash. Okay. Um, I knew it was something to do with So shaders. what's crazy about it, Elden Ring is so bad that it's it's not it's not as simple as just seeing a new asset and waiting for it to compile. You could even stand in one room and spin around and it'll stutter constantly. Cuz it, it's just not caching them. So right, yeah, now I now I remember. To be clear, Elden Ring itself is not bad. Um I haven't played it yet. I actually I started Horizon Zero Dawn on my recent trip and so I've been making my way through that. I have new thoughts on that by the way. I can talk about that more later on the show, but I'm done now. So I've I think seen you launching. I Elden keep on Ray wanting to next. ask you to play Halo, but I'm like he can't. I can't play Halo. I'm playing I'm I'm Steam Deck only right now, man. Yeah. I I I honestly I have used it almost zero as a desktop though because I I have I I, I said it's not for work and almost all of my desktop computer usage has been work. So I'm just happily gaming on my Steam Deck, sort of. I'm going to talk about that later. Ooh, okay. So it was it was a bloodbath, though, which really surprised me because on paper, the RDNA 2 graphics on the Steam Deck were terrifying for competitors who are stuck with Vega graphics. Right. Yeah, yeah. on their own Windows-based handhelds. But then those guys have Windows-based handhelds. But the thing is that Maybe that's if the, you were able to... If the Steam Deck was performing up to its expectations, though, it, sh it should be better than those Windows-first handhelds running last-generation GPU technology. That might be interesting because that might actually keep a space carved out for those other devices because if, like... I don't know if Valve is going to make it better. I don't well, know the they... thing is, it's a proprietary driver, so should it mostly be down to AMD to make it better? In that case, though, I don't know if AMD has much pressure on them from Valve. Yeah, maybe AMD has very little motivation to make these anything other like, than if, usable. If they're straight up saying, like, we are not supporting this, then what, what's, the, what's the pressure on them to support it better? You know what I mean? Yeah, pretty so, much like, nothing. It might just not get better and if so then then at least those other devices have a space which is kind of cool yeah and valve has said that when the full steam os 3.0 installer launches they will have support for dual booting so maybe that's just a price they're willing to pay there will be a performance hit but you can have compatibility but we took the safest possible path for everything rather than pushing the performance to the bleeding edge because we expect you to do the vast majority of your gaming in steam os yeah having the ability to dual boot on there would be sweet, actually. No. Actually, no. First, I'm going to talk about how there are other interface issues with the Steam Deck, like the fact that it doesn't have a task manager or a control alt delete button. The quick access menu button doesn't do anything. It doesn't have a task manager? What do you mean? Like, it doesn't have a task manager button. Oh, so okay. if you're, like, stuck okay. in a full screen application and it and it hangs. Just turn it off. Your SOL. Plug it. Go find a keyboard. <laughs> plug it in and press control alt delete. Like, you... <laughs> You're stuck. A lot of the Windows handhelds will have a show desktop button or some, or uh, like Aya has a software interface that you can bring up to slide over top of full screen apps and you can like, assign some way to force and... yourself out. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like it's it, it's made to compensate for Windows <laughs> goof ups, right? <laughs> so, so the one not built for Windows doesn't have that system. Yeah, yeah exactly. Funny. You're, you're going to have these problems. So we're ready for you. Right. 